to serve with the ambassador from Ukraine at a time that who would have ex suspected or expected the tyranny and the dictatorship to weigh in so much across the border into a sovereign country with such brutality that we were blessed, Ukraine was blessed, we are blessed by the representation of Ambassador Makarova. Uh, she has been brilliant, she has been understanding, she has been patient, she has been teaching us, and uh, uh, she has us on a fast course, a master class on how, to, how democracy is at stake, courage is at hand, and the Ukrainian people are so, uh, uh, so, are so worthy of our support. And with that, I'm very pleased to welcome Madam Ambassador Makarova of the Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Hello. Well, dear Madam Speaker. Congressman Danny Davis of Illinois joining us. Members are voting now. I don't know who's in charge here, but they call the vote when I'm having a display of photographs, but nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Congressman. It's a pleasure to see you. Thank you. The Lofgren of California, the chair of the House Administration Committee. Hello. Madam Speaker, member of Congress, and uh, everyone who will come and see this today, it's an honor to be here today and open this exhibition at the halls of the U.S. Capitol and in this very special room that Madam Speaker selected for this exhibition. It's an honor for which I'm truly grateful. I only wish these photos were showed you another picture of my country. I wish I could share with you the joy and pride of Ukraine, of the beauty of the landscape, the talent of our people, the innovations, our achievements, everything that we worked together on during the past year before February 24. Instead, here I am telling you the heartbreaking story and the tale of unbelievable suffering of our people. I wish I could tell you about our talented children well on the way to their amazing successes. Instead, these photographs that you see here today tell the stories of children who will never grow up, the children who were subjected to torture, children who will be scarred forever from the horrible violence they had to experience because Russian soldiers attacked our country. I wish I could tell you about the cities we are building. I wish I could tell you about new projects, about the houses, 3D printers, Instead, you see here again on the pictures the destruction that Putin's army, Russian army, brought to my country. And you will see or you can feel the lives that have been cruelly interrupted because of this war. You will see what a senseless war does to a peaceful nations. Because this is who we are. We always have been very peaceful. Ukraine has been a peaceful nation. A few weeks ago, Ukrainian parliament that works so closely with Congress now adopted a resolution that recognized what happens in Ukraine now as genocide. And these pictures that you see here will clearly tell you why. Why what we experience now in Ukraine is genocide. So these documents and these pictures document here the atrocities in Bucha, in Irpin, in Mariupol, in Hostomel, in Kyiv, in all other places. Uh, you see these horrific pictures of murder, of kidnapping, imprisonment, torture, rape, desecration of corpses. I don't know if there is any war crime that Russians did not do on the soil of sovereign and peaceful Ukraine. We love, we Ukrainians love building buildings. We actually love growing crops. We always call themselves as the nation of bread growers and start -uppers. But right now, we had to put aside our peaceful tools, and all of us, we, we have to go and defend our country, regardless where we are, on the battlefield, in Kyiv, in Western uh, Ukraine, or outside of the country. And we are grateful that in this fight, we fight 
knowing that our good friends have our back. Good friends like the United States, led by President Biden and by you, Madam Speaker. We are grateful for the unwavering and invaluable support that comes from both sides of the aisle, from both parties and both chambers of U.S. Congress. We share the same goal. This goal is to stop the violence, to stop the dictatorship, to stop the kleptocracy that threatens the free world, because we all know that this fight is much bigger than Ukraine, that this fight about something that we all cherish and believe. And on behalf of my president, our government, and the people of Ukraine, I would like to thank you all for all the actions you are taking, for all the help that Congress and American people, through you, are given to, to us. Particularly, the initiatives that Congress voted yesterday, mm -hmm. quite a number of very important bills. Particularly, right now, as we stand here, the Congress is voting for a very important piece of legislation that will be a very important first step for the land lease. Particularly for the package that President Biden announced today and submitted to Congress in order to provide us additional assistance in financial support, but also military support. A request that we in Ukraine join wholeheartedly and ask kindly, and I don't know, I don't need to ask people who are here, uh, to, to, to vote and review and vote on it as soon as possible. So the stronger we are together, the sooner we will prevail. The fewer lives will be lost and the more lives will be saved, as Madam Speaker eloquently said, on the floor just uh, 20 minutes ago. So I would like to thank you, and I would like to invite everyone to visit this exhibition and take a small look, a small peek into what Ukrainians are experiencing today, but also feel that regardless of all this pain, we are resolved in not surrendering, we will not surrender, and we will win. Thank you again, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. Let us applaud our Ambassador. For now, uh, again, a member said to me, do you want us to be here and vote, or do you want us to be downstairs? I said, no, I need you to, <laughs> to vote and participate and uh, to substitute. What you see here are parents weeping over the lifeless bodies of their children. Imagine. Innocent civilians lying dead in the streets or in mass graves. Homes reduced to rubble and a maternity hospital destroyed, just for example. These are some, and this will rotate. We will have others. I, we've been joined now uh, by uh, Congressman Mary Gay Scanlon of Pennsylvania. Thank you for joining us. She um, presented the rule today for the lend lease legislation and made such an impassioned plea for this cause. Thank you so much. And we've been joined by uh, Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence of Michigan. She's a member of the Holocaust Commission and therefore know, knows this story of just in, man's inhumanity to man. But let me just go to a place where the ambassador went. This has been quite a week. Yesterday we passed what I call seize and freeze. It has a better name than that. It's that seizing the assets of the oligarchs, freezing them, and when they thaw, it'd be time for us to rebuild Ukraine using that Russian money. They destroyed the country, and now we want them to um, pay for it after the victory. I see that we have Jan Schakowsky coming from Illinois and joining Danny Davis from Illinois, as I mentioned. I know you're blessed with many Ukrainian Americans in, the, in Illinois. Thank you for joining us. So that was yesterday, season freeze, thaw and rebuild the infrastructure. Today, we had the Lend-Lease Bill that you're all familiar with. In 1941, Franklin Delano Roosevelt came here, did the State of the Union Address, and introduced Lend-Lease. By March, it became the law of the land. We're refreshing it for now to help with Ukraine as well as for other Eastern European countries who are helping in this fight for democracy. And as a man, Madam Ambassador indicated this morning, our president, and we're so proud of him, he's been so strong and so unifying, 
has um, <clears throat> put forth the legislate the uh, proposal for security, economic assistance, and humanitarian assistance, which we now will. The Appropriations Committee is immediately, and Congressman Lawrence is on that committee, will meet to be turning that into legislative language. Uh, we have a committee week next week and hopefully be able to vote on as soon as we come back. But as the Madam Ambassador indicated, all of this has been very bipartisan. Season freeze, land lease in both houses, and the Appropriations Committee will come together what we call the four corners, House and Senate, Democratic and Republican, uh, to turn this into legislation, to turn it into law, to turn it into tangible support for the people of Ukraine. Who's there? Bobby Scott, Chairman Bobby Scott of Education and Labor Committee from the state of, uh, from the state of Virginia. Thank you, Bobby, for joining us. And I'm sure Bobby, I mean, Bobby works with the children all the time. We all share the concern that we see in these photographs. But in any event, uh, if you have any questions, I'm sure Madam Ambassador would be happy to answer them, as will any of us. Any questions? Thank you, ma'am. OK. Well, thank you all so much. Uh, Congresswoman Lofgren, as chair of the House of Administration Committee, she's really our boss when we want to <laughs> hang a picture or, or change the decor anyway. We have to go to Zoe Lofgren. We, we call, all thought this was a good idea. We, we, we call her the mayor of Capitol Hill because uh, if, if we want to get something done uh, uh, that affects how we present the Capitol, uh, Zoe Lofgren is our champion of that. But thank you all. And again, members will be coming in to in a tranquil time to study that is very emotional for us to see, but that motivates us uh, to do so much more. And again, Madam Ambassador, thank you for being such an intellectual leader, such an inspiration to us, and such a friend to our country. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's good to see you again. Yeah. Champions in national security, intelligence, cybersecurity, and the rest. Congressman Jim Langevin of the Rhode Island